Hello and welcome back to RC Icons. So today we're going to start the build process for the uh, Optima Mid Custom Special. So this kit uh, came out in 1989 and it was kit number 3140. So in 1987 the Kyosho Optima Mid was born. Um, superseding the Optima Pro which was the last version of the, the original Optima chassis where they actually took the motor from a rear mounted motor and they relocated it a front in front of the rear axle for uh, for better balance and and the Optima mid was born mid motor configuration 1987 so although the Optima mid was a very um, capable buggy it with a shorter wheelbase it it definitely you know, had its challenges against some of the other cars of its period, such as the Shoemaker Cat and some of the longer wheelbase cars, uh, the XLS. So, between 1987 and 1989, they came out with six different variants of the Optima Mid. So, the first one being the, the standard Optima Mid that we all know and love, and that has recently been reread now in uh, 2022. So I just recently got mine in. A lot of people are, are flooding the, the internet right now with builds of the 2022 Optima Mid and Riri, and that's great. I'm, I'm happy that, you know, that they're doing that. Um, I'm going to go the other route, and I'm going to build the sixth one uh, vintage instead. If you guys want to see uh, a really good Optima Mid Riri build, go see Jason's at True Vintage RC um, on YouTube. He did an awesome build where he was comparing the original diffs with the re-re diffs. Um, he shows the difference in the differences in the chassis and, and all kinds of you know interesting and in, in, uh, different characteristics of the new car versus the old car. So Kyosho with their re-re's has a tendency to change things to, to in design around today's technology, lipo batteries. Um, stronger motors, brushless motors, so they upgrade the cars for their RiRi collections, which is great. It's it's uh, it gives the ability for the vintage collector to keep what they have uh, true to form, and and not have the vintage market get flooded with RiRi cars that are exactly the same. Um, so it's really the best of both worlds. So in two years, two years. It's crazy. Two years, Kyosho put out six different mids. First one, again, the Optima mid that we all know and love. The second one, the Turbo Optima mid, where they changed a few things. They went to, um, they put anti-sway bars on it. They, they did a couple of changes to try to tweak the car to make it handle a little bit better on the track. Um, and it worked. And, and so the third one was the Turbo Optima mid SE. Um... Tweaked it a little bit more, went to the platinum shocks instead of the gold shocks. Just slight tweaks to the cars, not full design changes. And then in, uh, their, their fourth car, I would say, is when they really changed the game for the mid. And that's the Turbo Optima Mid Special. Um, also known as t the Tom's car. So the Tom's car... Um, I believe that's where the wheelbase changed. A lot of things changes changed with that car. The chassis was completely different than the three variants before. Um, and that was a really capable buggy. But I believe they made very limited numbers of that car. And that's why it's so sought after today. Then they went to the Optima Mid Custom. Where I feel, this is just my opinion. I feel like the car kind of you know kept going uphill. And then kind of went down a little bit. Um, and I don't want to say in terms of quality, but maybe in the engineering and, and the, the actual, um, nostalgia of the car. So in the vintage market, the custom is not as sought after as like the Toms or, or any of the previous variants. And then this would be the sixth one. Now, all five of the cars preceding this car had kind of the same body shell and look. To them although wheelbases changed um, like I said anti-sway bars changed different things changed so this is the the sixth variant the, the uh, Optima mid custom special these cars are available although the pricing on these cars 
it, I, I think I think the pricing that people are looking for in these cars are are more than what the car itself should dictate for what it is. So I don't have the sixth one built and in the wall of fame. Um, the ones that I came across on YouTube were a bit battered and I ended up coming across this one and it was a price that I could swallow. So I ended up buying it. And the way I looked at it is the other five mids that I have. So the custom and the toms that I have are new built, never run. So those cars really don't need work uh, per se. I'll show them on the channel. In fact, I'll probably break all six of them out once this one's done um, in the closing of part two of this video series. Just so that you can see all six of them kind of lined up. But this is the one that, like, the body changed. Like, everything kind of changed on it. Um, the wheelbase changed. So this car is four-wheel drive, belt driven, gear diff front and rear, anti-sway bar front and rear. It's got UJs in the front, dog bones in the back. I'm sorry if I'm rushing through this, but I know this is going to be a long video, and we're going to see all of this as we build the car. Um, so, yeah, it, in 89, you figure this was going up against, if it was a new car, it was going up against, like, an egress, right? So, um, gear diff, um, the gear um, egress was shaft drive, this is belt drive, so beautiful buggy the egress and of course this is obviously i don't know that i would say beautiful i like the box art i like the actual body on this car a lot of people don't but if you look at the cars of the day the vanquish had just come out the egress was just released they were all kind of getting that futuristic kind of look to them so um i think it's i think it's great that it's different from the other six i mean the other five to be honest so i'm going to bring the camera over i'm going to show you what the the inside of the box looks like the presentation it breaks my heart to have to cut these blister packs open and build this car but that's what this channel is about i have certain kits that are going to stay in kit form and i have vintage new kits that were meant to be built i bought them to build them and this just happens to be one of them so um let me get the camera over a little bit closer we'll take a look at what the box looks like and we'll start cutting this sucker apart and getting it built so now that I have you at an angle where we can actually see this. So there's your box art there. 1989. The box is gorgeous. To be honest. It's in great shape. No yellowing. No staining. Um, I did I did well getting this one. And uh, we'll take the cover off here. We've got our original paperwork. Sorry for the noise. We've got our decal sheet, we've got our instructions, absolutely brand new, which is to be expected, and then we have our box presentation. Boom! So we have our alloy long wheelbase chassis, right? We've got our front gear and our rear diff gear um, already built for us. We've got our ball bearings, Tamaya ball bearings, see how that happens. Belts, our shocks are pre-made, and then we looks like we've got uh, our counter gear and our pinion gear, our center gear and our spur gear. And then we've actually got our 12 millimeter hexes. So if you didn't know, the 12 millimeter hex was actually uh, introduced on the Optima, and I believe that's the first car in history I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the Optima back in 85, maybe, was the first car to actually use 12 millimeter hexes. I might be talking garbage, but I'm pretty sure it was the Optima. And soon, now, you know, they're all 12 millimeter hexes. So, um, believe it or not, that's that was a, a Kyosho born deal. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that. So yeah, let's get this, uh, we're going to get this thing torn open, and uh, again, I apologize for any noise. I love how Kyosho always did a picture of the chassis on the bottom of the box. Just, just a cool idea. We got our tires. It's awesome seeing original Bridgestones, brand new vintage Bridgestones. And then we're going to have all of our bags here. That one's done. 
So we've got our plastics, our bumper. Looks like those are our front tires. Some of our uh, rod ends. Our FRP top plate. Our arms. Our aerial. Huh, like we need that. Put our chassis aside here. These are our battery battery ties. We've got our rear tires. Our wheels should be in this box. I've never opened this kit before. Hardware bag. Our wheels. Metal parts, standoffs, shock oil, diff housings, motor plate, shock towers, UJ's pre-built, dog bones. So let's get this kit sorted out and let's start building it. So step one, it's all in Japanese no English at all step one is making up looks like some steering arms looks like my front and rear upper arms and my steering arms so I need to make six arms up so I'm gonna do that real quick and then uh, and then step two we start putting the gearboxes together I can't even tell if it's front or rear, to be completely honest. Looks like the rear gearbox. Yeah, it's the rear diff. So let me start putting some stuff together and I'll bring you back as soon as I have something to show you. So I figured I'd bring you back. I've been uh, pretty busy here. A little bit of a hiccup, but nothing major. So I got all the rods made. I got the steering rod made. Everything's sitting right here. You can see it all kind of laid out exactly like the book. And I got into step two. And it has me making the gear set, the pulley set. So this one is this one here. It took me forever to find the belt gear. I wasn't looking for it in yellow, to be completely honest. Oh, I just washed, lost a washer. Um, counter gear had me build that. Had me put a couple of bearings in the rear gearbox or diff housing and then it had me put the out drives on this is the rear diff it feels absolutely awesome this is the front diff so we're about to take the belt here in step four and get it all mounted into the gearbox now i have not done a lot of kyoshos Let's get that washer before I forget. I've not built a lot of Kyoshos, so uh, maybe I'm just overthinking this. But so this gear locks in with a pin in the back, but this gear doesn't, and that's the belt drive gear. So I don't I really understand how the belt is going to get powered if it's not locked in. Maybe sandwiching it together locks it in. I, I'm not sure, but it just it doesn't make sense to me. And where these directions are all in Japanese, you know, it's saying I'm assuming it's saying to glue the other end of the belt pulley on, but it says to grease these metal bushes here. So those metal bushes would have to turn on that rod if it's greased. So maybe it'll come together. Maybe it won't. I'm not sure, but I'm going to press on and if I have issues, I'll have to revisit it or if you know in the comments, let me know. But uh, I'm going to get to step four here and get this sandwich together. Then it's it's literally got me putting the motor mount and everything else on. Um, it's got me cutting out the, the polycarbonate gear cover in step three here. So I don't know. We'll, we'll keep getting it put together and then the slipper clutch goes together. And then uh, it looks like we get the whole rear end put together before we start messing around with actually putting it onto the chassis. It's a lot like a shoemaker. Um, so yeah, let me let me finish this up 
and uh, I'll bring you back when I have something for you to see. All right, so I figured I'd bring you back. So I put the bulkhead together. Um, and just three bolts. You get the gears in there. You get your belt in. And then the next step, they have you cut out your polycarbonate gear cover. You put the motor plate in there and you trim around it. Easy enough. And then you start bolting in. Right here. You start bolting in your motor plate. Is three screws lock tighted easy enough then it's the slipper clutch assembly so I got that taken care of this little part right here had me a little bit thrown so over here it shows you to put a four millimeter e-clip on top of that gear the back side of the slipper clutch then over here it's showing it again but it's showing two shims in there so I put it on here Put all of the motor stuff together. You can see it there. Then I had to pull it off, put the two shims in, and put it back in. I think that's right. And then the slipper clutch was pretty straightforward. There's a little, there was a little plastic bushing that went on first. And then there was the back side of the metal piece. I'm sorry, let me shut that air conditioner off. So then it was the back side of the plate, and then it was a friction pad, the spur gear, a friction pad, another metal plate, and then there was three springs that kind of sandwiched together with a top hat end piece, and then the nut, it, you know, obviously it's all in, in uh, J Japanese, so I can't obviously translate none of that. So I put the nut on just enough to grab the actual nylon. I figured that was a good starting point and then at some point if if I get this out um, we can adjust it in so everything is is nice and free it sounds great it's pulling nice um, I think any concern I had about that pulley in the gearbox is essentially gone now um, I think the between that and the tension on the belt it's gonna turn no matter what so the next step here number it's I mean it says step two number five but regardless it looks like it's getting uh, some suspension mounts in place so we'll get those suspension mounts in place and then it looks like it's um, getting the front diff together with the front with the front suspension mount sorry so getting the front diff together and then we're going to take both sections along with the belt guard and we're going to get it bolted down to the chassis. So at that point it should start looking like hopefully something at the very least. So let me get that together, the front gearbox on and I'll bring you back when we're getting ready to put it onto the chassis. Alright, so I figured I'd bring you back. This is a good part. I'm going to try to do it on camera. All right, so what have I done? Since the slipper clutch, we mounted the, sh the shock mount and the, the rear arm mount um, to the back. So that's those two pieces of FRP there. And you can see the, the shock bolts sticking out. And then the next step was to get the front bulkhead screwed together here and then to get the front shock mount and the front suspension mount put on the front bulkhead so that's this side you can see the front shock mount is there and there's your screws sticking out for your shocks it's hard to get a good camera angle and then your front arm support so the next step you have to you have to prep the polycarbonate belt cover, which I've done with double-sided tape. And now we're going to mount it to the chassis. Look at that thing. That's what I love about building a new in-box vintage kit. Like, not a scratch on it. It's like i got to be careful just where it's sitting on the bench. So... Let me just get this right. Three by ten and a three by fifteen in a corner. 
So let's get the 3x15 done first, since that one's different. Get this right. Figured I'd try to do this one on camera if I could. Seems to be easy enough, but watch me screw it up. Because that's how I roll. Something doesn't feel right. If I can do this without scratching the chassis, I'll be a happy man. My luck doesn't usually go that way though. Sorry for the clanking. But I should be done here relatively quick. Da -da 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 -da. And the belt is pinched. I knew I'd screw it up. Hold on a second. That's what happens when you do it on camera. Well, at least I get to show you guys my flaws as well as my professionalism. I am not perfect. But I get there in the end. And that's all that matters. At least I didn't break the belt. <laughs> Famous last words as he's not even done screwing it together. All right. So that's the rear end on. So now. Looks like the front end. We only got two screws on the front end. Two screws on the front end. And we're going here. Must be because the bumper has to go on, I'm assuming. It's actually going to start looking like something here. It's funny because every car is so different. Unless you're working on the same family of car, and even this one, it's the same family, but totally different from the other Optimus. Oh, like butter. Love it. There we go. Look at that. So now we have to try to finagle this thing into place. It looks like the raised end goes to the front. Let's just check the fitment here. Yep. So we can pull a double sided tape. Some people paint these. I'd rather leave it clear. That way I can see if there's dirt and crap in there. Just like that, the belt, lower belt cover is on so moving on try not to scratch that moving on it looks like we're going to start putting together rear arms and rear arm support the front rear arm support and it looks like the pins and then we're going to get the rear arms in place and then it's standoffs for the upper deck Body pins, or no, battery, battery pins, and then we're going to get into the front end. So let me bring you back when I've got the rear arms on. I'll let you see it then, maybe the standoffs, and uh, we'll just keep plugging away. All right, so I've got some, uh, got some stuff to show you here. So I'll show you the instructions, and then I'll show you what I did. So... First off, rear um, 
suspension arms. Um, it calls for the front mount to be screwed into the chassis from underneath and then it calls for you to put your pins through then you slide your arms on and then you got your alloy rear mount that goes in and it gets two screws and then two c-clips so all of that's on there's your front mount there and then your rear mount is here with your two screws and your eclipse and arms are nice and free perfect and then it's got you're basically getting your upper deck supports in so it's got your upper deck support here in the back it screws in from the side on the motor mount is two screws on the on the, on the opposite side and then there's one on the frp part here that goes through and then there's two screws on the chassis to come up underneath it so it's basically it's a brace that holds it all together but it's also the support for the upper deck and then you've got your um your standoffs your aluminum standoffs for the upper deck and then another belt guard the rear one acts as a belt guard as well and you've got a standalone belt guard in the front that helps hold that polycarbonate piece down in case that double-sided tape doesn't hold so when you look at it there's your your belt guard here and you get your four standoffs and then this is your rear deck mount so there's your side screw there's still something that needs to screw in down at the bottom and then you've got your two screws on the motor mount holding it in place and then obviously two screws underneath and then the next step um, was just getting the battery pins in um, the holders in so the, there's four of those and then the cradle for uh, a modern or a Tamiya based battery instead of the cells so really that's it the only thing I really came across the the two cell the two battery supports the cradles I called for uh, four three by six um, tapered head screws and one of them is a little bit smaller I don't have any more three by six tapered um, screws the fourth one that was in there was standalone and it looked like it's more like a 2.5 instead of a three so I put it in there for now only because there's not another one of the sixes and there's not any other screw like the two and a half so I'm assuming that back in 89 at the factory that one wrong screw kind of got thrown in there and uh, I'll continue on with the build I have three by six tapers that are black so if I finish the build and that screw isn't called for um, then I'll swap it out at that point so moving on to the front end our next steps are to get the steering knuckles together and then we'll be putting on the front arms with the steering knuckles and then it looks like we'll be getting the the uh, the front completely wrapped up, including a bumper. And then it's going to have us go back to the rear end and do the rear end. So let me get the front. At least I'll probably get the knuckles built and get the arms on. And just before I put it together, I'll show you them so that they're not on the car and you can see them. And then I'll wrap up the front and move to the back. So we're making some progress. I can't really lift the manual up because I have parts spread out on it, but I, I kind of wanted to show this to you. So I've got one side done. Um, not a ton of movement in the front arms. Um, probably a ton once it's done. Obviously, it's not going to move anymore, but it just seems like it's not a lot um, in the building process, but definitely nice and free. So I've got the left side... ready to go here so I forget I'd show you so we've got our, our steering support our inner bearing is in our UJ is in everything is moving nice and free but I wanted to show you I, I showed this tool in the I think my astute restoration so Jesus clips sir clips C clips call them what you want so this is dynamite tools you can get these on Amazon I think when I bought this one it was like 15 bucks it might be more it goes from uh, let me see here it goes from 1.5 up to 5 millimeter so this side is solid this side is split so you take your E clip or C clip Jesus clip and it just fits right in there 
So now I want to put this e-clip on this pin right here. Critical point here. The side that's split, the side that's showing the full e-clip, you want to put that down towards the solid surface because that's going to kind of hold that clip in place. And then you just push. On. You'll never send one thrown across the room again. I should buy stock in this company because when these videos air, this freaking company is going to get thousands of orders. If you don't have one of those for $15 already, you need to go buy one. How awesome is that thing? Talk about hard to reach places too. So when you're building this car, you, you can't throw the pin in from the back because it's got a little bit of uplift. So you, you have to go from the front and then you have to get the clip in here in the back of this bulkhead. I, I would have lost at least five of them trying to do that with a pair of needle nose or, you know, your traditional way. Donk! On. Two seconds. It saves so much frustration. So I am going to finish putting this one on. So we've got our, our joint here. I'm assuming that's for anti-sway bar. I'm assuming this is for shocks. This is our steering ball here. Um, I have noticed, so for whatever reason, and this is the same with a lot of manufacturers, but the bearings just, now these are Kyosho bearings and Kyosho parts. They literally just fall right out. So the outer bearings aren't in yet. Um, I'm not sure why they don't make the tolerances a little bit tighter for a bearing. I mean, there's an outer race and an inner race for a reason. I'm not dogging Kyosho. I'll be honest, this is a beautiful, beautiful kit, and it's been an absolute pleasure to build. But the bearing should not be spinning inside that housing like that. And you shouldn't have to glue the bearing in. Um, I will say that. To Maya, to Mia, I've been getting chastised on the comments about how I say stuff. Now, I'm a hick from the Northeast, right? So I've got a hard, somewhat Canadian accent. So if I'm saying to Mia, to Maya, however it said... I apologize if it's not how you say it in your part of the world, but it is what it is. Kyosho, Kyosho, um, it's, you know, everybody has their own tongue. So it is what it is, and I apologize if mine doesn't match yours. So I'm going to get the second arm put on here and, uh, and start getting into the back of this um, and getting the back put together. And then it looks like we're getting into... Uh, servo saver and steering it's not showing the servo itself but it's showing the servo saver goes on the two pins in the back or in the front here so we'll get that built up i'm not sure if i'll put a servo in here um, or not sometimes i do just to hold the wheel straight i haven't decided yet if i'm going to run this if i do run it i'll buy a reproduction under tray and body and wing to run it so that the car is protected at the very least the chassis is protected um i'm thinking i may run it so um i know there's a lot of people that want to see these cars run and uh i can't i can't certain cars i can't run my nico brat will just come undone if I run that thing. So th that car I can't run. But this is a brand new kit. The plastics feel nice and strong. They don't feel brittle at all. So this is a car that you know I might be able to run. Um, and uh, give give some of the viewers what they're looking for. So yeah. If I do so I'm not going to use the original body. I'll be honest. We're going to just do a reproduction body with reproduction decals. I'm willing to spend that money to do a running video for you guys and then just be able to swap it over for the original stuff for when it goes on the shelf. So let me get the rest of this put together and uh, I'll bring you back when, when I've got something to show you. All right, starting to look like a car. So I got the rear arms finished up, um, dog bones in the rear, UJs in the front, upper arms adjustable obviously, front and rear. Everything is so nice and free. And I can't tell you how smooth these diffs are. It's uh, it's unreal. And I apologize for my comment about the bearings in the last segment. So the inner bearings, 
press in. I didn't have them in all the way in the front. I realized it in the back. And uh, the, the inner bearings press in and hold nice. It's the outer bearings that are a little bit loose. At least they are in the front. Looks like they might actually hold themselves in in the back. Yep, they hold themselves in nice in the back. It's just the front ones. And the fronts are, uh, I don't think it's aluminum. I know a lot of the older Kyosho cars have aluminum hubs in the front. And uh, for whatever reason, the bearings just don't want to hold tight. Whereas the, the ones in the back are plastic and they hold, they hold in nice. But, I mean, that's... Every time you take your wheel off, the bearing's falling out. So, it is what it is. At least they gave us bearings, Tamiya. Tamiya. Whatever. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, if you're, I'm driving you crazy with how I talk. It is what it is. Um, so now, obviously, we're through step 15, which is the rear arms. And we're going to get into 16 here, where we start building this very complex looking servo saver and then it's getting the servo saver sorry let me try to get this well as you can see the chassis is complete so let me get back to where I left you off I really didn't do all that much although it looks totally different right things absolutely gorgeous stunning car you know I didn't I didn't give this car enough respect to be honest until I built it this is a badass car excuse my language so what did I do since I left you I put together the servo saver I put together the servo saver here very easy I mean it's like five pieces Then the servo saver mounts onto the two posts in the front as part of the steering mechanism on both sides. It just slides over. It's a little bit hard because you got to finagle it under the belt, but it, it feels great. Um, I did not put a servo in, although I did put the servo mounts in place just in case when the time comes. Um, they'll be there waiting for me. And then literally you snap on the steering arms that we built in step one here and here, here and here, right? All the dimensions that they give you in the in the book for their for your arms and everything are are spot on. And then it's just a matter of building the shocks. If you've ever built the Kyosho shock, it's it's pretty easy. So the only thing that's different from a Tamiya, usually the Tamiya, the bottom screws on this one that sits the 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 O-rings and uh, spacers get sat in place with a retent with a retention spring. That's really the only difference. Other than that, it's same old stuff. And then it's just mounting the shocks front and rear. So this is your front. And this is your rear. I had put my shock stays on the front backwards. I don't know if anyone picked up on that, so I had to switch those around. At that point, it was time for the top plate. The FRP top plate goes on with eight screws. Not a, really a big deal. And then it's just a plastic guard, belt guard. So the belt guard, they, they actually want you to cement it down. And you see that all the time on mids. And it's all kinds of cement and crap hanging off the side of it. I'm not running this car that much. Um, my intention is not to destroy the car. Um, like I said, if I run it, I'll put a, I'll put a re, -re body kit on it, but I'm not going to run it enough where I'm going to have an issue with the belt guard. So I was not going to glue it and destroy that beautiful, uh, FRP plate. Then it's just getting your rear wing mount done, which is in what? Eight pieces, six screws. So that goes on, sandwiches in, very easy. And then literally it's wheels and tires. Sorry about that, I lost you for a second. My phone was, my storage was full. 
250 gig. <laughs> Took me two hours. I had to delete like 4,000 photos um, or offload them from the phone, which is fine. So, yeah, when I just before I lost you, yeah, so I did the wheels and tires. Um, easy enough. No foams in them. They, uh, I, I can't. I can't express how nice it is to have a brand new set of original Bridgestones. We uh, we take it for granted. Um, but yeah, this car is super, super smooth. Super smooth. So, one more look at the chassis. Absolutely gorgeous in that gunmetal. So, let me get you back in uh, the regular view for a closing. And uh, we'll talk about the body shell so that's it for the chassis um what can i say it was it was an absolutely phenomenal build everything i mean if you've ever built the kyosho kit you know already everything just fits perfect not that tamaya kits don't fit perfect but they're totally different um totally different kyosho's quality um I can't really compare it. I mean, if you were building an egress or a, a top force evolution, the quality is, I would say, is exactly the same. Um, this is obviously a high-end racing buggy. Um, that's what it was meant for. So, obviously, this kit's going to be a gorgeous kit um, regardless. But it absolutely went together like butter. And that was working off of an instructions that were 100% in Japanese. <laughs> So literally all I had to work off of was the pictures. So thank God they had at least the the uh, the, the hardware sizes um, and they had the, the hardware pictures on the side so I could at least figure out what I was working with. But Kyosho plastics aren't lettered or numbered at all. There's no A parts tree. There's not even a one parts tree. It's just random parts trees. None of them are labeled. So um, that takes a little bit of time to source your parts. Um, but again, this came from 1989, right? So things were different back then. I mean, I know Tamiya, Tamiya, whatever. Um, you know, their parts trees back then were labeled, but Kyosho didn't label them. Um, it is what it is. So you kind of have to just investigate and, and do what you need to to figure out what part goes where. The only thing that I ran across, so I did change that 2.6 screw in the bottom for a 3 millimeter um, tapered head. Unfortunately, I didn't have a posi head. It's a hex head, but it's black, so it's it's done. And then it called for one more somewhere else. I did find where the 2.6 went. It goes on the aerial stay. I didn't even put it on, um, but there's an aerial stay that goes that bolts to the chassis over here. And that 2.6 tapered screw, that single screw, is for that um, aerial stay. So I was short two 6 millimeter by 3 um, or 3 by 6 millimeter tapered screws. I don't know. I, I went back and looked and I didn't use them somewhere where it was calling for an 8 or something like that. So... I had a bunch of 8 millimeter ones left over, so maybe they just got the count wrong in the factory. I don't know. It It's just one of those things. Um, but if you're in this hobby, you've all, everybody's got spare parts just laying around. But, I mean, look at that thing. It is so, so smooth. The sound you hear is obviously the tires, and the shocks are just awesome. Now, this thing is sat, um, you know, a mile in the air. Obviously, with it being a race buggy, they you know they wanted it to be um, to have some suspension for when it's going over the jumps. Now, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to look at the once the body goes on it, see what it looks like. I think once the under tray's on it, it's going to bring it down a little bit as far as looks go. But I may run it first, and then when it's time to retire it to the shelf. Um, Maybe I'll put some spacers in those shocks and get it down just a little bit more. I'd like it to be right about there, um, to be honest. But yeah, so that's going to wrap up this video. Um, 
the next part in the series will obviously be doing the body. Now, I've already looked in the manual, and of course, with it being in Japanese, it might call for a paint color, but I, I don't know what it, <laughs> In Japanese, I don't know what that color is. So I'll look online real quick. I mean, to me, it looks like a light gunmetal gray. It's not silver. It's, it's almost like a champagne gold. Um, and I know Tamaya does a champagne gold. But I really want to try to hit the color right. Um, so I'll just I'll do some investigating on online and see if there's a color that kind of pops out anywheres and then uh, the decaling looks pretty straightforward and and that's it like we'll just the next episode we'll get the tire writing done we'll get the body done and we'll get this car done and uh, and that'll be the end of the Optima mid custom special and then maybe in the next video depending on time we'll get the other five of them out that I've got and kind of just compare real quick the wheel bases and stuff and you can kind of see you know how the car evolved and maybe that's good content for a separate video because that could probably get long if we start taking the bodies off and everything else um so that's going to do it for this episode of rc icons um if you like the video please like and subscribe uh turn your notifications on um Obviously, with this being a new channel, anything we can do in regards to that's only going to help it get out there. And uh, my intention is to try to grow the RC community and uh, and get a good a good community in in the comment section um, talking about this stuff. So until uh, until I see you again with the next RC icon, um, we'll see you soon. Thank you.